the Sony Alpha A5100, which in my opinion is one of the best cameras you can get for under $500 brand new. And this is my one year relationship with that very same camera. I'll try to go into plenty of detail, but I can't guarantee I won't go a little overboard. Anyway, let's get started. The Alpha A5100 is a great small and light Sony E-mount lens camera. Its body is small enough to remind you of those little point and shoot cameras your mom used to use for your 8th birthday party. But this isn't one of those cameras. This is an interchangeable lens camera, which means you can easily take off the lens and put a different one on it if you would like a different shot. Just like those bigger Canon and Nikon cameras. But with this product, Sony catered more towards basic and amateur photographers because, well, it lacks a viewfinder. What it does come with is a screen that flips upward because, you know, my selfie game gotta be on point. But seriously though, the flip up screen is great for selfies and, well, this shot you're watching right here. The camera isn't completely user friendly and it does have a learning curve just like those bigger and bulkier Canon and Nikons I mentioned earlier. But, you know, after a couple of hours, you'll get used to it, just like any other camera. This camera contains the image and video quality of its more complex and complicated older brother, the Sony Alpha A6000. But this one lacks the bells and whistles. The body is made more cheaply on the Alpha A5100. It lacks the dials and buttons of its older brother, and it also doesn't have a viewfinder. So this camera is like a gateway drug. It helps you immerse yourself in the Sony camera ecosystem, start developing your lens collection, and then you'll slowly start thinking about buying their much better and much more expensive cameras. It's stripped down to its essentials and you can't really complain because it makes a great entry level camera. That being said, this camera is great at what a camera is supposed to do well, take photos and videos. Compared to a smartphone, which is great in well-lit environments, this camera does pretty well in the dark. It's not perfect, but it makes night footage a lot more tolerable. It has lightning fast autofocus for its price point, and it also has 1080p 60fps video mode for those buttery, smooth video footage, and well, just smooth slow-mo. Almost every video you've ever seen on this channel has come from this camera, and I mean every single one the bad ones and the good ones. First, I wanna say I am no photographer. I am probably not even a good videographer, but this is what you can expect from an amateurish level of production quality. Also, I wanna say YouTube also degrades the quality a little bit because they're gonna go low on the bit rate. So I apologize if it doesn't look as crisp and clear as it does from my own personal computer. Here's just a few examples of the types of videos and images you can expect to get out of this camera. Anyway, let's get started with that. Now onto the negatives. If you're planning to shoot continuous video footage for 24 to 28 minutes, 
this camera will overheat and then shut down. With breaks in between, you can get an indefinite amount of shooting time in. Of course, I doubt too many people will be shooting for 24 to 28 minutes straight with this type of equipment. I'm shooting 24 to 28 minutes straight with this kind of equipment. As for photos, no overheating issues there. But Sony does state you'll only get off around 400 shots before the battery dies, which is a bit low. It lacks a hot shoe that allows you to connect other things and that could have made it an amazing, amazing value. But instead, it's just a great value for its price. The lack of a viewfinder makes it hard to get photos or videos in broad daylight. However, you can easily remedy this by going into the menus and changing the brightness settings on the screen. Oh, and speaking of menu, it is super confusing and convoluted. And to this day, I still don't get it. With a body similar to a point and shoot camera connected to an e-mount, I believe this camera is for those amateurs out there, those people getting into photography or video, and for people who need something more than just their smartphone. This helps people get their feet wet and transition slowly into Sony's more expensive lineup of cameras. This camera would make a great vlogging camera with its lightweight, its good image quality, and its fast autofocus. This is one beast of a camera for under $500. Its lack of a mic input prevents it from being a amazing vlogging camera, but it's a great one, especially for its price. It's also a nice bare bones version of the Sony Alpha A6000. Overall, I think this camera is a great introductory course, I mean, introductory camera to Sony's mirrorless lineup. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment, and well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.